Everybody's asking for a tip without doing any work. You get to the cashier, all they did was oh, check yeah. you out and they turn that screen around and ask for 20%. 15%. <laughs> 20% is like, well, like I get 20% sometimes. Like, okay. No tip. Or you add the tip. I'll be giving it the tip. So I'm the type person that'll give the tip and then. Uh, no, I'll give the tip. I'll give the tip. But it's still lately, like the past few weeks, I'm like, no tip. What are we doing here? So <laughs> in that example, yes, the hundred dollars is a lot based on us tipping normally, but you base it on the higher, the twenty percent of a hundred dollars, right? Or twenty percent of a thousand dollars. It's a big difference. Yeah. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you did an absolute fantastic job. It just means that the person just, like you said, was one to do it. And so, I do that a lot. Okay guys, we have a new segment that we're testing. Not sure what we'll do with it yet, but here it is. So I'm gonna read a question that I received, that we received, and we'll just talk about how do you handle it. Student hit me up and said they had a dissatisfied client and need our input on how to resolve it. I'm gonna read what it says. Client called to book a moving clean, specifically stated a construction deep clean had already been done, only a basic, basic moving will be needed. Never a basic move-in. Um, Post-clean walkthrough with client assessments were positive outside of thinking that the windows and fans were included. The cleaner was tipped $100 given accolades by the client's father. Few hours later, the client called back stating after a more thorough assessment, he and his wife were pissed off. There's dust residue on the bottom of their feet. They received um, a spit shine um, type of move-in clean. Client declined to have the cleaner return, stated he's going to have another cleaner come in. Uh, the client sent pictures, videos of dust, which did, which showed the dirty bottom of their feet and the dust on their hands. Uh, the, the student was saying, we think this client should have booked a post-construction clean, which isn't a service that we offer. Cleaner said there was residue on the floor that wasn't regular household dust. The cleaner swept, vacuumed, and mopped. She did post-clean walk through a client who was barefoot, and his only issue, once again, was about the windows and fans. We think this cleaner was not successful because the client booked the wrong type of cleaning necessary for a post-renovation situation. We don't think the client should be refunded because the redo was declined. So they were asking my opinion on it. Your thoughts? So first, I would say, let us know if you guys like this segment. This is like a Q and A segment. <laughs> we just started of, of, of the podcast, and we'll see how it goes. We'll see what we do. So, because people always ask us questions, and we need to kind of elaborate a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So, first thing that came to mind was communication is key. So, in this situation, the client, the student said that the client booked the wrong cleaning. Mm -hmm. The cl client will not know if it's the wrong cleaning unless we tell them. So there's no way for the client to know that this is like the wrong situation to be in or if it's like the difference between the two. So it's up to us as business owners to inform the client as to what they booked and the difference between the two. Right. So that's my first inclination. So my first thing was the cleaner said that she does, she mopped, she did all these things. Did she tell you when she walked in, hey, this is a bit more dustier than they book for? That's the initial thing that when they walk in, they should do an assessment of the house let us know if there's more, less, whatever the case may be that's yeah. required. Which when I asked that, um, the, the cleaner did not say that. Um, they went on to add, the client acknowledged apologized for not being clear about needing a construction clean. So I basically was saying, it doesn't, yes, the client booked the wrong thing, but you are the experts. The contract, the person going is, is the expert. So if you get there, like I said, and it wasn't what you expected, mm -hmm. then it should have been communicated. Definitely. Hey, you know, this is more than we expect. Because what happens is you might have tried to clean the floor or whatever, and you couldn't get it completed because of supplies or whatever, but now the client just thinks you just didn't do a good job. They don't think that, oh, you didn't have the tools for it, et cetera, et cetera, because you decided to clean the home. So on that point, so mm -hmm. the client shouldn't have been made aware that it was the wrong cleaning. So there's no point where mm -hmm. I would say, well, yeah, you should have booked this or made them aware that they, they should have done something else because in their mind, again, mm -hmm. it goes back to, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you on that point. Um, okay. With the, that goes back to communication again. So mm -hmm. we, this, this even goes back to the, before the client, this goes back to the cleaner. So what was your communication when you hired this person or when they are out cleaning homes? Like what is the expectation upon arrival? So what do you do when you walk in the house and it's dirtier than expected? That's actually mm -hmm. one of our interview questions that we asked them. So we asked them, when you get to a house, I'm hiring you, you're my cleaner, you get to a house and it's dirtier than expected, what's the first thing you do? Mm -hmm. They tell me, oh, I do a walkthrough, and if there are things like, all right, they want a different bedroom, a different bathroom, I call and let you know. 
So you are our eyes and ears in the field. We yeah. are working our jobs. We have nine to fives. You're the expert. So we're relying on you to be the expert in the situation. Let us know, hey, I got here. It wasn't this. What you guys think I should do? Right. And the biggest thing that the student was harping on, which happens a lot, was like the person did a walkthrough and agreed and the person tipped $100. And I was just saying, because we've faced this before, that doesn't mean anything. Some people just feel like I need to pay somebody for doing services. Some people don't like to have conflict, so they don't say anything to the person and they just want them out their house and then they come back and tell you. Um, yes, with them doing a walkthrough, they did do a sign off, but Different situations, you still kind of have to rectify rectify the situation, right? And so, the, uh, before you go, go ahead. Don't don't lose your track of your thought. Mm -hmm. So the tipping part, I want to stay on that for a little bit too, mm -hmm. because you know, like it's, it's 2023, right? So everybody's asking for a tip without doing any work. You mm -hmm. get to the cashier, all they did was oh, check yeah. you out, and they turn that screen around, ask for 20 percent, 15 percent, 20 percent is like, and well, like, I get 20 percent sometimes, like, okay, no tip. Or you add the tip. I'll be giving the tip. So I'm the type of person that'll give the tip and then... Uh, no, I'll give the tip. I'll give the tip. But it's still... Lately, like the past few weeks, I'm like, no tip. What are we doing here? So <laughs> in that example, yes, the $100 is a lot based on us tipping normally. But if you base it on the higher... Like 20% of $100, right? Mm -hmm. So 20% of $1,000. It's mm -hmm. a big difference. Yeah. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you did an absolute fantastic job. It just means that the person just, like you said, was one to do it. And so, I do that a lot. So when I explained this to the student, they were like, okay, you know, the, the, the cleaner should have contacted us. We can understand that. And I'm, we're willing to take accountability. And I also want them to say, um, you know, some other reasons why people don't say something right away. They may not look well. Like I said, they don't want to have conflict. They wait till the wife come home. Like the husband could be fine with it. And yep. then the wife comes home and is like, what is this? That happens, that happens a lot. That happens a lot. a lot of times, right? So then they also had mentioned that the, the you know, the client denied a cl the cleaner coming back and they said they will get someone else. And I said, well, did you offer a different cleaner to come back? And they said they did not. So that's another thing. You know, they, maybe they're like, oh, I don't want that person back because they don't know what they're doing, whatever. Offer someone else to come back out to do the job because someone else can still do it, right? So that was another thing that they kind of uh, learned about then that they realized they didn't give that option, which they definitely should have. Yeah, that's, a, that's another big one, too, just re-offering another person. Because you can say, hey, you know what? My person messed up. It's understood. Mm -hmm. Let me go. Let, your goal in these situations is to try to rectify it for the client as best as you could if they are reasonable. If right, they will talk to you, if they are open key. to it, if they are reasonable, your goal should be to rectify it. But most people are not reasonable, so we understand that. Yeah. So... But then also, I was saying when I was offering the other person to come back, you can also say like part of your policy, like we have this guarantee, right? So it's part of our policy that we guarantee that we'll rectify the issue. If you're denying us to rectify that, that kind of forfeits other things happening. That forfeits me giving you back money. That forfeits me following through with the policies that we have in place. So sometimes people are like, okay, fine, send someone else when you kind of mention that as well. So Anything else? Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, they just was like in terms of resolving, like how do we figure this figure this out? So I was like, what is the client wanting? He's like, the client is wanting a, a refund, right? So usually with these type of situations, we won't give a full refund back for the entire cleaning, right? Because someone did the job, and I explain that to people, and ninety five percent of the people understand that. Like somebody worked. We pay our people a reasonable rate. We can't just not pay them at all, right? So we can take away maybe the part that you felt was dissatisfied. So. If it was the deep clean that you felt we didn't do at all, maybe we'll reimburse you back the deep clean fee. Yeah. If it was the fridge that you felt we didn't clean well, maybe we we'll reimburse you back the fridge. So it really just depends when it comes to that. And that's what they were looking for of like how to determine what's fair and what's reasonable with reimbursing back this client. But it was a learning lesson as well. That's what it is. So let's do a quick recap. So I mm -hmm. would say communication at the very beginning is yeah. something you have to, to communicate with your cleaner. Yeah. So that's your eyes and ears on the ground. So mm -hmm. I'll start there. Communication was something that we could learn from. Yeah. That, that was the that was the, the biggest issue there. If we would have known from the beginning, we can call and charge more. There wouldn't be no issues. Expectations Done. are set. So, Everything is happening. There it is. Communication up front. She would say like, well, we don't. I don't have the tools for a post-construction clean, and that's what this requires. I'm going to do my best. You know, there's so much different language that goes into it, so I think that is like, the biggest thing there. So in your hiring process, letting people know and finding out what do they do in this situation. So we give right. our cleaner situations that we know we've gone through. Even if you don't know, we give our students these test these scripts so that they can know what to say, what to ask for, and also how to rectify these issues before they even start. Now, 
That's not going to solve 100% of your issues, right, right. but it will give you a starting point so that your cleaner knows that, oh, yeah, I messed up. I should have called you to let you know that. Mm-hmm. Now we know, okay, you messed up. Now how do we fix it? And they're be more, they would be more open to the communication and feedback. Right. And you want to create that, that feedback loop so that they're always giving you feedback and as you go along and grow. And, you know, I just thought about this. In the, when I'm usually, before, when I was having conversations with them and talking about, you know, the reason that we can't just give you back the full thing, I also would mention, obviously in a professional way, we did get a sign-off, you know, that, that's part of our policy. We're still trying, we want to rectify this, but we actually did get a sign-off that things were well. So this is what we can do. Kind of like, you know, we're going against what we would do, but this is what, this is what I'll do in this situation for you. Yeah, if you guys like these little uh, Q&A segments, let us know. We'll try to record more. We just want to get on here and provide some value and uh, give you guys some more game. Thank you. Peace.